Hello Microsoft Windows developers. This video is the fourth in a short series on creating the libraries for any cryptocurrency daemon program using Microsoft C++ on any Visual Studio. This fourth and last library is the LevelDB library, the sources of which are part of the Bitcoin distribution. Alternatively, one could also pick a version at code.google.com is the URL. Version 1.13 is used in Bitcoin 086. Version 1.15 in the latest release 9.0.1 etc. So we begin by installing and unzipping the Bitcoin sources to a directory of your choice. And now let's start Visual Studio, like so. And we select New Project from Existing Code. And on the pretty screen we choose Next. And we must tell Visual Studio the project file location which is the level DB directory in the directory where we installed our Bitcoin sources. So let's browse there. And so we choose the level DB directory and it's all entered in. Let's give it a project name. Say level db 1.13 and we choose next. Notice it defaults to Windows application project. We want a static library project. So we click next. We could put our processor defines search paths etc. for debug and release here, but let's do it in this Visual Studio where it seems more natural. Click Finish and here's our new project just about ready to go. As opposed to the Berkeley database pr uh, library we just built that was pre-configured, we have to do some setting ourselves. It is static library, but for code generation, we have to change it from dynamic uh, linking DLLs to multi-threaded debug, which is the static or release mode. Yes, forgot to say save. Or release mode multi-threaded static. This time I will say apply. Okay, so we choose OK. There is one file in the port directory that we need to look at. And we have to choose a manifest constant for the Windows platform, which is obviously this one. Uh, we have to add it to our defines for both static and release mode. So let's do that. And we apply and we do similarly for release mode. Processor defines. And lastly, the librarian's going to give the static library the name. Uh, project file name, level db 1.13.lib. And to be consistent with all the other libraries, the debug version should have a D at the end. And so we do that ourselves. And we are almost ready to go. So we'll do a save. 
Now we notice that there is uh, many test files in the project, each of which has a main and one bench file which has a main and any project can only have one main anyway so we're going to have to exclude all of them. Furthermore, we're building a library so we don't even need a main. And so we need to select each one, group select, single select, your choice, and say exclude from project like that. But I won't bore you with me doing it. I'll just pause and come back with all of them done, but I'll list all the ones just so that you can check. And here we are with all the files marked in the DB directory. We have C test, corruption test, DB test, DB format test, file name test. Log test, skip list test, version edit test, version set test, and write batch test. In the mem environment directory, mem environment test, in the port directory, port example, port posix.cc and .h. The readme was already marked. In the table directory, filter block test and table test. And finally, in the utils directory, arena test, bloom test, cache test, coding test, CRC 32C test, environment POSIX, environment test. And finally, test harness.cc and .h, test util.cc and .h. And having done that, we can save all. Uh, it's not fatal if you miss one of the tests. It just compiles a main into your library. Uh, I don't think it's a problem. If you miss two of them and there's two mains, the compiler may complain and say you have too many mains. Uh, in which case you just stop, mark the file as exclude and recompile. As an aside, if you wish to use Microsoft Visual C++ 2005 on XP, uh, you must make a small change to the files portwin.cc and .h in the port directory. There is one Windows function there that didn't exist until Windows 8, perhaps Windows 7 or Vista came into existence. Those files are in my additions to the Bitcoin sources at GitHub, which will be given in the next and final video. The original ideas go to a one Eduard A on the groups.google.com forum. Here's the URL. His port went in .cc and .h can be seen in this uh, message in the group. And I just wanted to give him credit since he did it back in 2012. Meanwhile, back to our project. It is time to compile because there's nothing more to do. So let's build our static multi-threaded libraries. For the debug mode, off we go, and it will soon be done. Famous last words. pause for the next one so you won't be bored 
watching text scroll by a window. These are warning messages at the default warning level 3, which is one lower than the highest. But nevertheless, 45 seconds later, we have succeeded in building a static multi-threaded library for debug mode for the level DB database version 1.13. Let's do release mode. I'll say rebuild, but this time I'll pause. And here we're back. 39 seconds later. And this is the release mode. With the same number of warnings. And you thought level DB code was clean. And so we've succeeded at building these static multi-threaded libraries for compiling Bitcoin and any cryptocurrency derived from the Bitcoin sources, and perhaps some that aren't. Uh, as with the other three libraries, I always finish with a Bitcoin build using the libraries. So I'll switch to another project and let's build. And there we are and that's the end of this video.